Breathe love. Breathe love. Boom. Boom. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Park Avenue Church in Minneapolis. I'm Greg, and I'm so glad you're here to worship with us online today. As we begin, I would be remiss if I didn't thank you for collectively joining in prayer during the duration of this uh, trial for the murder of George Floyd. You have been interceding for justice, the jury, the lawyers, for the city, for the family of George Floyd, and so many of you have been doing the long, slow work of justice for a long time. And while we breathed a collective sigh of relief when we heard the murder conviction of Derek Chauvin, it is by no means the end of the journey, as you know. A lot remains to be done as we seek to be part of God's redemptive and restorative work. So let's continue to center ourselves in the heart of God, which compels us in the work of doing justice, loving mercy, and walking in humility with God. So here's some good news, okay? Beginning next Sunday, May 2nd at 10 a.m., we will open for in-person worship in our sanctuary. <laughs> so the, the downward trending cases here in Minnesota, uh, in Minneapolis, the vaccination of our staff, the daily increasing numbers of vaccinated folks, give us confidence that now is the time that we can do so safely with masks and distancing. Um, this will be a, a soft reopening, so to speak, through the month of May uh, with worship in the sanctuary only. So no coffee fellowship right now or early childhood care uh, or children's church or youth ministry at this time. But we foresee the first Sunday in June, mark your calendars, as the date for our grand reopening celebration. And that will include children, youth ministry in some capacity. Plus, I want you to know that as we begin in-person worship, we will continue our online worship option and be transitioning to a new look. More on that later. And just so you know, so we can provide access to the vaccine in our neighborhood, we have partnered, Park Avenue has partnered with the Minneapolis Department of Health as a vaccination site. About 400 people have now been vaccinated because we are on this block. Good news, something to celebrate. Uh, so if you need help getting a vaccination or know someone who does, please let us know. Email us at info at parkavchurch.org. So today we're glad to have Reverend Cynthia Williams to bring the message. Pastor Cynthia is the district superintendent of the River Valley District here in Minnesota, and we count her as part of the Park family. <laughs> Whether you already know her or are meeting her for the first time today, you'll be blessed. So I want to thank you, uh, say thanks to Pastor Cynthia for being with us. So let's continue with this call to worship. We gather together to worship God, the shepherd of our souls, the one who has created us, who sustains us, who redeems us, who walks beside us in good times and bad, who calls us from death to life, and who calls us to follow. This is our God. Let's worship together.
Good morning, Park Avenue. This is Darrell Williams, the youth director. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the ability to speak directly to you as it concerns the ongoing matters of our churning hearts. We pray that our ears remain open to receive the words that you speak to us. Let us never forget that prayer is a dialogue and not a monologue. Lord, you alone are worthy of the honor and all the praise, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the author and perfecter of our faith. And through you, all things came into being. And apart from you, not only, not even one thing has come into being. Lord, you alone are worthy. So Lord, please lead us closer to you so that we might come to a place of true peace in our hearts. For far too long, we've been bogged down with the burdens of unrest, injustice, infirmity, uncertainty, anxiety, fear, depression, and hate. Lord, we ask that you speak to us through the noise of the pandemic, the noise of politics, the noise of policing and pollution. Lord, let us hear you clearly and stand firmly on the promises of your word because your word tells us that we are more than conquerors, that all things work together for the good of those who love God to those who are called according to his purpose. Lord, we pray fervently for the many families who've been impacted by this horrific pandemic. Lord, we ask for peace in the homes of those who have been devastated. We stand in the gap with our Asian American and Pacific Islander brothers and sisters who have all been experienced hatred and blame from misguided leadership in this country. And we stand in the gap for the families of Dante Wright, of Adam Toledo, of Makia Bryant, of Tamir Rice, and countless other youth who've lost their lives and cut down short under the rule of law. Lord, let us lovingly extinguish the flame of hate that has been passed like a torch from generation to generation. Lord, as we take a second to breathe a breath of fresh air of accountability from the Chauvin trial, Lord, let us exhale relief from the grief of it all. And we pray for courage of a communal restoration in the city of Minneapolis. And as the nation is looking for our response, Lord, we lift our leaders and our lawmakers and our influencers and ask that you give them wisdom to serve their community justly. And Lord, let us wrap this prayer up in the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive, forgive us, us our, our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead, lead us not into temptation, but the evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and, and the glory, forever and ever. 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 Amen.
Our scripture comes from John chapter 11, verses 28 through 44, and I'm reading from the New International Version. After she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher is here, she said, and is asking for you. When Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered, entered the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who had been with Mary in the house, comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out, they followed her, so supposing she was going to the tomb to mourn there. When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. Where have you laid him? He asked. Come and see, Lord, they replied. Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Jesus, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb. It was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. Take away the stone, he said. But Lord, said Martha, the sister of the dead man, by this time there is a bad odor, for he has been there four days. Then Jesus said, did I not tell you that if you believe you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you for you have heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet wrapped with strips of linen and a cloth around his face. Jesus said to them, take off the grave clothes and let him go. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearing and doing of God's word. Let us pray. Oh, Lord God, speak for we, your people are listening. Amen. In this season of Easter, there continues to be a deep need for resurrection that only God and Jesus can give. Accountability has come in response to the killing of George Floyd, and there is some relief. We take a breath. Yet even as celebration erupted on Tuesday, we are mindful that there is much work to be done toward the long road to justice. The pandemic is not over. We are still in a place of waiting and wondering. No matter where you live or stand, to different degrees, we are experiencing trauma, anxiety, angst that is fed by a deep hunger and longing and need for the world to be put right. This time of disorientation, disruption, discord, confusion, and chaos, it has thrown us but it has not thrown God. God creates out of chaos. God is doing a new thing. In this 11th chapter of John's gospel, Martha and Mary, the sisters of Lazarus, finds themselves in the center of a tragedy. We find Mary and Martha standing in the center of their trust and faith in Jesus and in the reality of their brother's death. Mary and Martha, their words, Jesus, if you had been here, our brother would not have died. Sounds like both a confession and a complaint. The community who came to grieve with the sisters are both in awe of the emotion of Jesus, see how he loved him, and cynical. Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? In our frail human conditions, the tragedy of death has a way of causing us to surf the waves of our emotions and our understanding and our faith in God. Last week, someone asked me, where is God in all of this? This. 
This is the question I asked in 2020, and it is the question I continue to ask in 2021. Lord, what is it that you want us to know? What are you trying to teach us in all of this? How would you have us to be? And I confess to you today that it has been difficult to hear God's still small voice speaking through the cacophony of messages that I, like you, am at risk of leaning to my own understanding. My friends, we daily find ourselves standing uh, at the intersection in this in-between space. And at these intersections, we need an anchor that will hold. And that anchor is Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Mary and Martha, in their confession and in their questions, they knew to look to Jesus. When we find ourselves standing between life and death, hope and hopelessness, doubt and despair, where we look and who we look to, makes all the difference in the world. In the face of death, destruction, despair, people are looking and watching and wondering, how will we, Christ followers, how will we respond? The death of Lazarus, just like the death of Dante Wright, just like the deaths from mass shootings, it is not just a family matter. It is a public matter. It is a community matter. Jesus weeping in this story is a public acknowledgement of the pain that death causes in public life. Violence and death in our communities, the spiritual death caused by poverty and systemic racism, divisiveness over decisions that foster life and health for the common good, it affects all of us. Where is God? Last week, Pastor Greg lifted the text where some other Christ followers found themselves in trauma and fear, sitting in a room behind locked doors. Jesus came and stood among them and called them to peace and commissioned them to be about the work of forgiveness that would set people free. I could say more about that, but that's another sermon for another time. Because at the heart of that message is the reminder that we have been set free to help others get free. Where is God? Still standing among us, calling us to shalom, to be well, communally well, to be at soul's rest, to be reconciled with God, that we can be reconciled with others. Where is God? still calling us to be the ones to proclaim that God is still on the throne, Jesus is real and present, and Jesus is still ready to save and redeem and resurrect broken lives and broken communities. The text reads, the dead man came out. Lazarus walking, although his feet were still bound. Lazarus alive, but still dressed in the clothes of death. Jesus tells the people to unbind him and let him go. Too often, like Lazarus, we, the church, God's people, find ourselves having been given fresh breath and new life, but still wrapped in grave clothes. It reminds me of Juneteenth. Juneteenth commemorates that when Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation in 1862, declaring all slaves free in Confederate states, that word did not reach the 250,000 slaves in Texas until June 19th, three years later. They were free and had no idea. Why do I share this? Church in Jesus, we have been set free, and too often we live like we don't know it. The protests that erupted throughout Minnesota and across the country with the rallying cries of Black Lives Matter is an emancipation message that it is time for the Juneteenth message to fully reach the criminal justice system. Juneteenth has not come to our educational, civic, political, and corporate structures. And Juneteenth has not fully come to the church. 
Park Avenue, there are still too many people who don't know that Jesus came to set all people free, to call people from death and into life. There are too many people who don't know that God's love is more powerful than sin, more powerful than shame, more powerful than the past. There are too many people who don't know that God's heart's desire is that we be free, free to embrace life, free to lean in and not pull back, free to live life playing to win instead of playing not to lose. And how will they know if we don't tell them? We, like Lazarus, we need the hands of community to help loose them and help loose us, to help set us free. We need grace-filled community to walk in the way that God would have us go. Is this your testimony today? Whose hands has God used to unbind you, to loose you, and call you to life to help you live free? I need you to know today, and I remind myself that our voices matter. This Breathe Love message and ministry of Park Avenue, it matters. You have been called for such a time as this. This is your season and this is your call. We, the people of God, have been given an evangelistic task. Our task is to graciously, generously be the one to invite and welcome people into community. Our task is to tell the stories in words and deeds that shape faith, that shape life, that moves us to live beyond ourselves. We have been given the honor and privilege of telling our death and new life in Christ stories so that people can find their authentic place in God's story. We are shaped and changed by each other's stories. Our stories, when we tell them true, when we hear them in the real, with all the pretty facades removed, grave clothes come off. Not only the clothes of others, but our own grave clothes come off. We are loose to a new level of faith and action. Park Avenue, I am so grateful today that together on this earth, in this world, in our communities, in all the broken, dying places, we have been given light and life to shine forth hope. I heard someone say, we are God's missionaries of life in the face of death. When we testify that God is active, that God is a burden bearer, that the pain of the past is not too big for God, grave clothes come off and freedom takes hold. My sisters and brothers, we have a story, a story of Jesus who brings good news to the poor, proclaims release to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and lets the oppressed go free. God's people, we are, we have a Savior who is the Alpha and the Omega and the one who holds us up in the middle. Hallelujah. We have the one who in the beginning is Emmanuel, God with us, and at the end is, lo, I will be with you always, even until the end of the age. Someone is waiting to be loosed and let go. They need to know the story of Jesus who with just three words raised Lazarus from the grave and in three days at the intersection of a cruel cross death, death to death and call forth life everlasting. Today we give thanks and praise that our mighty, awesome, wonderful God meets us in the tombs of life, calls us forth, gives us community, looses us, and let us go. May it be so. Amen. Let us pray. And so, Lord God, we do give thanks and praise for you in all the ways, Lord, even now, you are calling us back to life. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. You are always fighting for us, heaven's angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my savior and my friend. By your grace I live and breathe to worship. 
I can do. I can do all things. All things through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. We can do. We can do all things. All things through Jesus Christ. Through Jesus Christ, who strengthens us. Who strengthens us.